Kusama was called the Princess of Polka Dots. Kusama experimented with many different subject matters and many different art forms. She often made art using fish as a subject matter, as fish are a staple of Japanese cuisine. Today, you will create your own Kusama-inspired fish artwork. You will need a white sheet of paper, construction paper, a glue stick or glue bottle, scissors, markers, and crayons. To begin, pick a sheet of colored construction paper. Using a black marker, you're going to create some wavy lines in your background. It doesn't matter which direction they go. We're just decorating our background in the style of Kusama. Next, I'm going to turn my paper the other way around and make some other wavy lines. In between these shapes, I'm going to fill it in with smaller lines. Kusama is called the Princess of Polka Dots, but she's also known for using other patterns that repeat, such as lines, shapes, and dots. You want to continue this step until your entire background is filled in. You do not have to use black. You can use any colored marker you want. Think of it as wallpaper and you're creating the background and creating the wall for your fish. Next, on a separate sheet of paper, you're going to draw your fish. I'm creating a sunfish, but you can create any fish you want. I'm going to do it using my pencil first. Don't forget to draw the fin and the eyes. Kusama likes lots of patterns, so I'm going to add patterns throughout my fish. Then I'm going to use markers to outline certain parts of the, air, of the fish using the color that I want. And then I'm going to continue using it markers to create my patterns. I'm not using markers to color in my fish as I want to use it with crayons, but if you prefer filling things in with markers, you can too. Since she is called the princess of polka dots, I'm filling it in using mostly dots. Look up different types of fish online and find some inspiration. Think about the different types of lines you can add. Also, as I use my polka dots, I'm carefully placing the dots so that they are not touching each other. After you're done using markers, you can begin coloring in your fish with crayons. I like, I like mixing markers and crayons together as the markers shine bright while the crayons fill in the larger areas. As you're picking your colors, you may want to think about colors that create contrast, like a light color and then a dark color, or colors that complement each other like two different types of greens or two different types of reds. This will bring unity into your painting and artwork.
When you're done coloring it in, carefully cut out your fish. Go slowly when you're cutting so that you don't accidentally cut off the tail or the fins. If you do, you can always glue it back onto your background. Once you've cut out your fish, you're going to glue it onto your background. I'm using a glue bottle, but a glue stick is a much cleaner way to add it on, whichever you prefer. I'm looking at my picture and I think it needs something else. So I'm gonna take some of my scrap paper and I'm gonna add some bubbles for my fish. A quick way to do it is by folding your paper a couple of times and cutting all the sheets at once. That way you get more than one bubble. See, now I have four. I'm just gonna put a couple of glue dots and stick them on. My bubbles need a little decorating too, so I'm gonna add some marker lines on them so that they match my picture better. Don't forget to sign your name at the bottom and take a picture of your art and send it to me.